The CNO cycle for carbon nitrogen oxygen is one of the two known sets of fusion reactions by which stars convert hydrogen to helium, the other being the proton-proton chain reaction, PP chain reaction. Unlike the latter, the CNO cycle is a catalytic cycle. It is dominant in stars that are more than 1.3 times as massive as the Sun in the CNO cycle. Four protons fuse, using carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen isotopes as catalysts, to produce one alpha particle, two positrons, and two electron neutrinos. Although there are various paths and catalysts involved in the CNO cycles, all these cycles have the same net result. 411H plus 2E minus 42E plus 2E plus plus 2E minus plus 2 new E plus 3 gamma plus 24.7 MeV 42E plus 2 new E plus 3 gamma plus 26.7 MeV the positrons will almost instantly annihilate with electrons, releasing energy in the form of gamma rays. The neutrinos escape from the star carrying away some energy. One nucleus goes on to become carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen isotopes through a number of transformations in an endless loop. The proton-proton chain is more prominent in stars the mass of the Sun or less. This difference stems from temperature dependency differences between the two reactions. PP chain reaction starts at temperatures around 4 times 106 K 4 megakelvin, making it the dominant energy source in smaller stars. A self-maintaining CNO chain starts at approximately 15 times 106 K, but its energy output rises much more rapidly with increasing temperatures so that it becomes the dominant source of energy at approximately 17 times 106 K. The Sun has a core temperature of around 15.7 times 106 K, and only 1.7% of 4 He nuclei produced in the Sun are Born in the CNO cycle. The CNOI process was independently proposed by Carl von Weizsäcker and Hans Bethe in the late 1930s. <laughs> Cold CNO cycles Under typical conditions found in stars, catalytic hydrogen burning by the CNO cycles is limited by proton captures. Specifically, the timescale for beta decay of the radioactive nuclei produced is faster than the timescale for fusion. Because of the long timescales involved, the cold CNO cycles convert hydrogen to helium slowly, allowing them to power stars in quiescent equilibrium for many years. Topic. CNOI The first proposed catalytic cycle for the conversion of hydrogen into helium was initially called the carbon-nitrogen cycle CN cycle, also referred to as the beta weizsacker cycle in honor of the independent work of Carl von Weizsacker in 1937–38 and Hans Bethe. Bethe's 1939 papers on the CN cycle drew on three earlier papers written in collaboration with Robert Batcher and Milton Stanley Livingston and which came to be known informally as, "...Bethe's Bible". It was considered the standard work on nuclear physics for many years and was a significant factor in his being awarded the 1967 Nobel Prize in Physics. Bethe's original calculations suggested the CN cycle was the Sun's primary source of energy. This conclusion arose from what is now known as a mistaken belief, that the abundance of nitrogen in the Sun is approximately 10%, when it is actually less than half a percent. The CN cycle, named as it contains no stable isotope of oxygen involves the following cycle of transformations, 126C 137N 136C 147N 158O 157N 126C. This cycle is now understood as being the first part of a larger process, the CNO cycle, and the main reactions in this part of the cycle are where the carbon-12 nucleus used in the first reaction is regenerated in the last reaction. 
After the two positrons emitted annihilate with two ambient electrons producing an additional 2.04 MeV, the total energy released in one cycle is 26.73 MeV. It should be noted that in some texts, authors are erroneously including the positron annihilation energy in with the beta decay Q value and then neglecting the equal amount of energy released by annihilation, leading to possible confusion. All values are calculated with reference to the atomic mass evaluation 2003. The limiting slowest reaction in the CNOI cycle is the proton capture on 147N. In 2006 it was experimentally measured down to stellar energies, revising the calculated age of globular clusters by around 1 billion year. The neutrinos emitted in beta decay will have a spectrum of energy ranges, because although momentum is conserved, the momentum can be shared in any way between the positron and neutrino, with either emitted at rest and the other taking away the full energy, or anything in between, so long as all the energy from the Q-value is used. The total momentum received by the electron and the neutrino is not great enough to cause a significant recoil of the much heavier daughter nucleus and hence, its contribution to kinetic energy of the products, for the precision of values given here, can be neglected. Thus the neutrino emitted during the decay of nitrogen-13 can have an energy from 0 up to 1.20 MeV, and the neutrino emitted during the decay of oxygen-15 can have an energy from 0 up to 1.73 MeV. On average, about 1.7 MeV of the total energy output is taken away by neutrinos for each loop of the cycle, leaving about 25 MeV available for producing luminosity. Topic. CNO2 In a minor branch of the above reaction, occurring in the Sun's core 0.04% of the time, the final reaction involving 157N shown above does not produce carbon-12 and an alpha particle, but instead produces oxygen-16 and a photon and continues 157N 168O 179F 178O 147N 158O 157N like the carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen involved in the main branch, the fluorine produced in the minor branch is merely an intermediate product and at steady state, does not accumulate in the star. <laughs> CNO3 This subdominant branch is significant only for massive stars. The reactions are started when one of the reactions in CNO2 results in fluorine 18 and gamma instead of nitrogen 14 and alpha, and continues 178O 189F 188O 157N 168O 179F 178O CNOIV. Like the CNO3, this branch is also only significant in massive stars. The reactions are started when one of the reactions in CNO3 results in fluorine 19 and gamma instead of nitrogen 15 and alpha, and continues 188O 199F 168O 179F 178O 189F 188O Topic. Hot CNO cycles Under conditions of higher temperature and pressure, such as those found in novi and X-ray bursts, the rate of proton captures exceeds the rate of beta decay, pushing the burning to the proton drip line. The essential idea is that a radioactive species will capture a proton before it can beta decay, opening new nuclear burning pathways that are otherwise inaccessible. Because of the higher temperatures involved, these catalytic cycles are typically referred to as the hot CNO cycles, because the timescales are limited by beta decays instead of proton captures, they are also called the beta-limited CNO cycles. <laughs> Topic. 
HCNOI The difference between the CNOI cycle and the HCNOI cycle is that 137N captures a proton instead of decaying, leading to the total sequence 126C 137N 148O 147N 158O 157N 126C HCNO2 The notable difference between the CNO2 cycle and the HCNO2 cycle is that 179F captures a proton instead of decaying, and neon is produced in a subsequent reaction on 189F, leading to the total sequence 157N 168O 179F 1810Ni 189F 158O 157N HCNO3 An alternative to the HCNO2 cycle is that 189F captures a proton moving towards higher mass and using the same helium production mechanism as the CNOIV cycle as 189F 1910Ni 199F 168O 179F 1810Ni 189F Topic. Use in astronomy While the total number of «catalytic» nuclei are conserved in the cycle, in stellar evolution the relative proportions of the nuclei are altered. When the cycle is run to equilibrium, the ratio of the carbon-12, carbon-13 nuclei is driven to 3.5, and nitrogen-14 becomes the most numerous nucleus, regardless of initial composition. During a star's evolution, convective mixing episodes moves material, within which the CNO cycle has operated, from the star's interior to the surface, altering the observed composition of the star. Red giant stars are observed to have lower carbon-12, carbon-13 and carbon-12, nitrogen-14 ratios than do main sequence stars, which is considered to be convincing evidence for the operation of the CNO cycle. See also Stellar nucleosynthesis, the whole topic Triple alpha process, how 12C is produced from lighter nuclei